I have had some friends of mine who have said to me that they so value having a man of a particular complexion, of a, of a particular color and culture, that if they cannot find him, if they can't find the man who can be the husband, father, head of household, and, and he is in a certain color, they will forego marriage, children, and homemaking all together. And, and that is a decision that I respect. I respect a woman's decision to do that. I think that it's a foolish decision. Hey everybody, my name is Benzi Mark and I am back with another video. This video is impromptu, unplanned, unscripted. It's just something that I saw in my comment section and I figured I would devote a whole video discussing it. Um, if you don't realize by now, my channel is first and foremost to Christian women. And then as a, um, then a subset of that, Christian women who are specifically homemakers and housewives. And then under, nested under that, Christian women who are homemakers and housewives or aspiring homemakers and housewives and are particularly black. Um, the reason for that is one, because I am a black woman and I'm sharing my experiences as a black woman being a housewife and homemaker, but also because in the black community, especially in the black American community, there is not a lot of representation of seeing um, traditional um, families. Um, so there, there's a real need for people like me and others on the internet to share our experiences and let young women know this is actually an option available to you if it is something that you're desiring. And every now and then I'll get a comment in my comment section um, in response to my homemaking videos and being a housewife and I got one not that long ago and I felt like it was worth making a video to respond to um, because it was just too much for a com uh, just a single comment response and so one of the women uh, commented she said I would love to hear your take on fulfillment versus spiritual growth how long have you been a homemaker the majority of black women cannot afford to stay at home uh, cannot afford to be stay-at-home moms and wives. I think that question, I think the question I have is, how do you continue to grow outside of your children and husband? She has a lot of questions in here, but I'm only going to focus on one. And that's specifically the one where she says the majority, or it's a, it's a statement, the majority of black women cannot afford to be stay-at-home moms and wives. Um, and I think what's implied there is that my discussing homemaking and, ha and being a housewife is presenting a reality that is unreal realistic for the majority of women who look like me and I want to push back on that and say that is a lie um, and I want to expound on why I believe that is a lie and how we can go about making it more of a reality and before I go on I will say I responded to her and said hey there thank you for commenting and watching I agree with you that many black women have made decisions that have made homemaking virtually an impossibility which is why one of which is one of the reasons I cover these topics. Many black women do not know how to identify and select men who are eligible for the role of husband, father, and head of household. I would like to help with that if I can. And then she responded, um, but there are very few men to choose from. Very few black men can afford to make the wives, to make their wives stay at home mothers and wives. I'm sure a lot of women would love to stay home with their children, especially in the first few years of their children's lives. What do black women do that make it impossible? This video is answering that question. Um, before I just get into my explanation, I want to set the stage with a metaphor because I think sometimes it's easier to understand what um, is trying to be explained if we can kind of visualize it in a metaphoric uh, language. So let's say that you're a woman and you have run out of toilet paper and you know that you need to go pick some up. And so you go to the store. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm already stopping the story, the reason why I'm using toilet paper is because if you do the shopping for your household, you know that most of us have tremendous brand loyalty to the kind of toilet paper we use. Most of us will buy the same brand of toilet paper without even giving thought to switching brands because most of us like the toilet paper that we like. We don't change um, the brands that we use. So going back to the metaphor, you run out of toilet paper, you go to the store and you realize that the toilet paper that you're looking for, they don't have the brand. It's a run out, there's nothing there. There's, there's shelves and shelves and shelves of other toilet paper, but the brand you want, they don't have. In that situation, what do you do? Most sensible people who are actually in need of toilet paper will just get toilet paper from a different brand. That's what most of us do. Now, think about that metaphor and consider the store, the marriage market, 
And please understand, by no means am I saying that men are toilet paper, okay? Obviously, men are much more valuable than toilet paper. I'm just using that example because we feel a lot of, it's a, it's a common household item that we feel a lot of brand loyalty towards. We don't typically change our toilet paper. Um, but consider it in this way. If you go to the store or the marriage market and you're looking for a man who can be a husband, father, and head of household, but, they, but you go to the store or to the marriage market and you find that they don't have the brand that you're looking for. They don't have the brand of man that you're looking for. They have men who can be a husband, father, and, and head of household, but he doesn't come in the brand that you want. He doesn't come in the complexion that you want. He doesn't come in the skin color that you want. What do you do? A sensible woman would say, well, the thing that I originally came for and the brand that I want isn't available, so I'll choose another brand that still meets the criteria and take that one. Just like you would if you were looking just for natural toilet paper, you, you would do that. But what I'm seeing is that a lot of women, what they do is going back to toilet paper. They need toilet paper, they go to the store, the brand they don't have is not there. So like a foolish woman, they just go home with no toilet paper. You know within a couple of hours you're gonna need that toilet paper. It was silly to not buy the toilet paper that was available to you. And in a similar way, women who say, because I can't speak to whether this is true or not, I don't know what the marriage and dating market looks like because I've been removed from it for over 10 years now. And when I was dating, there didn't seem to be a shortage of black men, but she's saying, and I'm just assuming that what she's saying is true, she says, there, um, there are very few men to choose from. Very few black men can afford to make wives stay-at-home mothers and, and wives. And so in a similar way, if you're like that woman going to the store or you're like that woman going to the marriage market and you're looking for a man of a particular brand, but they have men, just not the brand you're looking for, it'd be foolish to not just get a man of a different brand or get a man of a different complexion. That's foolish, because eventually, just like you're gonna need the toilet paper, you eventually are gonna need a husband. Um, so it, it just it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, the way that women approach marriage. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong or right about people groups tending to stick with their own. It's just a natural phenomenon. For most people, most people tend to stick with their own ethnicity to stick within their own tribe, if you will. I don't think that there's anything right or wrong about that. It's just the way that it works out. And so I don't pass judgment on in either direction. But what I'm saying is if what you say is true, that there's a shortage of the toilet paper brand that you want or the man in the complexion that you want, get a man of a different brand. Another thing that I see happening is, um, in some of the videos that I've posted where I, I've discussed how I believe that the wife's chief priority is to be of service to her husband, her children, and her household. And then after that, she can work and, and um, you know, be economically inclined and all those things. And something that I've heard is that, well, it's impossible for me to not work because um, my husband can't afford it. My husband just can't do it, so I can't do this thing that I want to do. And going, which is homemaking, I can't just be a homemaker like you because my husband can't afford to do that. And I think that that is a tough situation to be in, but I'm, I want to speak to women who are not yet married um, and who are still in a position to make good decisions. Going back to the store analogy, if you've run out of toilet paper, and you go to the store looking for some in a particular brand and that brand of toilet paper is gone, would you then say to yourself, well, this brand doesn't have the toilet paper I need, but they do have paper towels. This brand does have paper towels. I just get, I'll get the paper towels. Then you go home and you try to use that paper towel the same way you would a piece of toilet paper and you realize this isn't working the way I want it to work. That's a similar thing that I see happening in the marriage market as well women will go into the marriage market looking for a man who can be the father a husband father head of household financially speaking so that they can be homemakers and they find that they don't have the brand they don't have the skin color that they're looking for so instead they'll stick with the sin the skin color but find a man who isn't meeting these criteria 
He isn't able to really be an effective husband. He's not able to be an effective father. He's not able to be a head of household financially speaking, but they marry him anyway because the brand was there, because the complexion was there. And then after they've married this man, having compromised on the criteria that they have uh, went in looking for, they then complain about how their husbands are not uh, what they wanted him to be and, and how they feel like they're settling. And I'm like, girl, you made the decision. You made the, you you knew you went into that store looking for toilet paper, but instead you bought paper towels, and now you're complaining that the paper towels don't perform like toilet paper. That's on you. That's the decision that you made, and so that is part of the reason why I hope I hope I'm not losing you guys with the metaphors because the metaphor is to help make it plain, not to make it confusing. And I hope I haven't lost you. Um, but the reason why I'm making these videos is because I recognize that the people to which I belong, we have undergone so much in our history. And one of the things that has been most greatly affected is the nuclear family. We don't have a lot of traditional families and even those who are seeking to establish it don't know how to go about it. They don't even know how to go about um, creating effective nuclear families. And so that's part of the reason that I make these videos is in general for the broader group of Christian women who are housewives and homemakers, but also specifically for my sisters, my the black women who are trying to accomplish it but don't have any examples around them about what it looks like. You need to be very careful when it comes to picking your partners and understanding what is your, what is your priority. I have had some friends of mine who have said to me that they so value having a man of a particular complexion, of a, of a particular color and culture, that if they cannot find him, if they can't find the man who can be the husband, father, head of household, and, and he is in a certain color, they will forego marriage, children, and homemaking all together. And, and that is a decision that I respect. I respect a woman's decision to do that. I think that it's a foolish decision, but it's a decision that's hers to make. But you can't be the woman who says, because they don't have the man in the brand that I want, in the color that I want, I'll just forgo all of it. You can't be the woman who makes that decision and then also complains about how you don't have a husband. You can't do that. You have to pick one. You can't do both. You can't make decisions that make it impossible for you to be a, how, a, a homemaker and housewife and be able to devote yourself to that and have marriage and have children. You can't be a woman who says, I'll forego all of that, but then also complain about having to forego all of that. You also can't be a woman who partners with a man who you know is unqualified to be able to provide for you and your children in the way that you would like, such that you could be a homemaker. You can't be the woman who chooses the unqualified man and then complains about how he is unqualified after the fact. You can't do that. And so these kinds of lessons are what I would expect mothers to teach their daughters. But if the mother herself was in a broken marriage or in a marriage that was never formed, it can be difficult to translate information that you yourself don't have to the next generation. And so that's why I'm making these videos. For the women who weren't able to inherit a legacy of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and discernment from their mothers relating to matters of femininity, marriage, mate selection, motherhood, all of those things. I am making these videos to help supplement the gap. I'm not gonna have all of the answers because I myself am still learning and I myself am still getting wisdom from the Lord. But what I do have, the information I do have, I'm gonna try to offer it to you in a way that you can understand. And I, I just understand how critical and pivotal is the decision of marriage and mate selection that I want to equip you, unmarried women, especially unmarried black women who desire to be able to be homemakers and housewives. I'm trying to equip you with the information you need to make effective decisions that will make it so that you can obey the Bible as it relates to devoting yourself first to your home and then using your extra time for work, etc., and all of those things. 
I'm sure that I've stepped on some toes. I'm sure that I've stated some controversial ideas. I think that everything that I have said accords with sound wisdom and judgment, um, but I'm sure that it's rubbed some people the wrong way. Either way, whether you agree or disagree, I want you to leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.